we have two people who won't be here tonight and a third Spencer who's going to be late and I have no idea how late uh, we have a quorum here though nobody from the public so let's go straight to we'll skip over public comments we'll go straight to approval of the minutes of uh, February 5th would anybody who was there or who read the minutes like to make a motion maybe who was there right I'll move to adopt Second, Gwen, anybody? Yes? Yes, second, sorry. Okay, great. Was muted. All right, so um, let's take a quick voice vote. I agree. Melissa? Yes. Gordon? Yes. Richard? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Okay. And Gwen, obviously, yes. So the minutes have been adopted. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the Regional Developer Conference. Now, after our last month's discussion in which Laura Baker really gave us some good information and some good suggestions on who possibly to contact, I made an initial inquiry of three different companies who are currently doing projects here in Northampton. Um, Sunwood, Dufresne, and O'Connell Development Corp. Um, all of them have projects around, not affordable, just regular market rate. I sent an email inquiring about um, uh, interest in our idea and I and I have not received a single response. One of them, O'Connell, because I had a specific contact name, I um, also followed up with a phone call to that person and there has been no response. So this tells me that probably people are extremely busy and um, we're either going to have to cultivate over time and you know kind of pursue not only why we'd like to hear from them, but maybe what's in it for them, um, or go back to the drawing board. Hmm. I, yeah. I think it, I think networking can help. Um, putting ourselves in places where we're connecting with people. And um, so that's just one thought, um, just having worked in the construction industry, um, just being out in the world and sort of, you know, it, is, it probably is that people are busy um, or they're gearing up for their summer projects or the this year's projects. Um, but yeah, so I think what you said, Carmen, makes sense to take time to cultivate some of these connections. What do other people think? I would first say, don't be discouraged because it's probably true that they're busy and they probably maybe needs to be a little yeah. bit more push to, and maybe the, I mean, not that we are our chump change here, but you know, the city itself, if the city itself were seen as the one convening this meeting, it might get their attention quicker or, or make, they might actually get their attention. Um, and I wouldn't do this to the exclusion of the of the nonprofit developers too, because in some ways they have they they are the more likely target for this because they're the ones who are going to be looking for money. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little surprised you didn't hear anything back from those three folks. Mm -hmm. it's this that is unfortunate. Um, and I feel like what the other two just expressed, like when Laura's on this call, 
she's so active in this in this arena absolutely and, um you know bev is is has been as well mm -hmm. in her career and yeah. i think that maybe um asking them for a little help uh i mean when i i emailed Laura a couple months ago after we had this conversation and said, you know, who would you, who would you invite? And, you know, wayfinders, community builders, habitat, yeah. city yeah. development, beacon. Yeah. Like, um, I, th I think we might be able to, um, definitely. Yeah. Grab more attention from those guys. And then, and I, and I also think that Laura would be willing to assist with that. I mean, even if, you know, if you CC her on the uh, email well, she, invites and she tags in afterwards, she's not here right. for herself, but I think she would be willing to, to, to help. Us right. With that. But the thing is, um, Melissa and everybody, um, after our last meeting, I also set up another time to talk to Laura um, and in order to get more specific recommendations and just to follow up with a few of my questions. And um, I think because we had been for over time, right, including last month, talking a little bit about really the lack of so-called workforce housing, right, which is not necessarily affordable housing, right, for that rubric. Um, I think that, so that was the focus of my conversation with Laura. And I think Based on that, she gave me these the, these three names of these just regular state of the art developers, um, and we definitely talked about other people like community builders and wayfinders, etc. But yeah, so that was one of the reasons why I just sent out an email to those three people. Yeah, gotcha. Well, I mean, to me, like workforce housing would be teachers um health you know um health care workers um that's that's still going to be moderate income mm -hmm. or even low income mm -hmm. um and it's unfortunate that that's how it goes when it comes to people getting paid but that's the reality of it and i think if Northampton wants to attract workers, you know, there could be more mixed income, like what's happened at Village Hill. And um, I know Community Builders was involved with that building. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there are, there must be others. I guess that's what I'm thinking is like, I don't know, I feel like I kind of have to go at it from an angle that my brain will work with this. <laughs> whole thing um I'm I'm learning about this so um it's a learning experience for me but mm -hmm. yeah when I do go back to something you said last month too which was um you said you've been interested in surveys right um, yes I like surveys and and I think they certainly have like a usefulness and I thought like I just imagined um when we identify the different organizations that we want to get information from so going about this in a very different way developing a survey and having each of us take one of those organizations and sort of delegating right and being responsible to um approach and see if there's a time where where, where the person can sit down with somebody and ask those questions so we get we have a uniform set of questions we can bring back Okay. <clears throat> so you mean, I mean that, that might be them and then creating the survey or creating no, no, the first, survey? Yeah, Brad, yeah, because we need to we need to know what we want to know, right? We need to figure right. out what we want to know and then connecting. And maybe that would seem that would certainly be less labor intensive and maybe more welcome from from agencies to have one person wanting to come in and talk um, just, just to get information for our purposes here in the city. Mm -hmm. So I thought about what you had said. Mm 
that brings up a really important question, I think. What would we want to know? Can we develop a list of questions? When you think of building housing in Northampton, you think of um, what are some of the zoning regulations that that might prevent you from or what are some of the challenges that you've had in terms of building in Northampton. What are some of the things that stand in, stand in your way? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody else want to pitch in with us or? I think the, the questions themselves will be informed of what is our objective. And this all started back when we were thinking about how do we build the case for uh, uh, funding the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And not that that has to be the only thing, interest that we have, but it certainly is part and parcel of what it is that we're thinking about. And so it, it does suggest things that we've been talking about with Laura and others along the way, which is what are the barriers? Um, what, are the, what are the things? And if we don't get an actual event, I'm just rethinking this. I mean, you just mentioned survey, which is another way to get at this. It's not, it's to, it's to create an instrument and ask them to respond to it. And that mm -hmm. creates a, it creates a case if we can't if it builds the, I mean it may not build the case but we were thinking that it might build the case for um, for um, reinvigorating the trust fund. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, if we start generating revenue, we have to put it somewhere. That's another option for the trust fund. But, but getting developers to build, to say that this CPA is not enough is probably where we're, we're, what we're hoping to find. Right. I think that if we just create a survey and send it out, we might not get a good responses yep. from that. Yeah. So I think that it needs to be a person to person thing with, with survey in hand, us doing the writing rather than asking somebody else to fill out, mm -hmm. um, you know, the form type thing. Um, does this make sense to everybody though, Gordon? I think you brought us back to an essential point, which is that we began thinking in this direction in order to build a case for reinvigorating the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and, you know, kind of juxtaposing what we've heard from the city, which is CPA funds are adequate, uh, as opposed to what we hear from Laura, which is there's so much need out there and we can obviously see that the money wouldn't, wouldn't just sit, sit there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not sure where to go with this. I mean, do we want a survey here and now? I mean, do we want to, do we want to delegate and ask people to try to contact some of these, um, some of these um, agencies? I don't mind trying to reach somebody, um, but I'm not sure that they would get back to me. Um, and then my thought about the survey is I've surveys are challenging sometimes to get people to respond to. But one of the things that ha does work is um, setting a deadline and then in working with a, a deadline that's reasonable, given that people are busy and they're doing other things. And this is like some small thing that would appear, but consistently center, sending out the link again, like some. One of, one of the things we ran into with barriers was like people knew they had seen it in their inbox at some point, but they had lost it or it got cleared out, you know, so sending the link again, if we were going to do it that way. But on the other hand, I mean, we could do, you know, just one on one and um, try to do that. But yeah, we could try it. I'm not close to it. It sounds like from this discussion as well that although we veered off sort of into um, 
market rate developers that we want to pull back from that and go towards the affordable housing um, builders and developers. Yep. Does that make sense? You may ultimately get a better response from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are they more potentially invested in this arena? Mm -hmm. um, Hmm. All right. Well, Hannah. Hannah. Just curious also if um if maybe some of the issue around the lack of response is that it's sort of an amorphous ask. I mean, it seems like kind of the ask is would you be interested in participating in a conversation, which might be kind of a hard question to answer as opposed to we are holding a forum on this date. Can we expect your attendance? Um, I don't. I don't think there's an easy solution to that because we can't hold the forum until we have the agreement. But um, I'm I'm curious if people are just not exactly sure what the ask is. Um, I haven't well, seen the uh, email. So, well, in my email though, I was specific. And I said we are we are hoping to, we are planning to hold this forum on Monday, April first. Oh, okay. So that's that's pretty specific. Yeah. For about a forty-five minute conversation through Zoom. Okay. And so then this is what we're interested. Sort of very very generic. What we're yeah, interested. Yeah. That's so. too bad. Okay. Well, that's that's too bad that nobody responded. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could. Try sending it again, Carmen, and see if try fishing for something one more time and um, but maybe include more people in that email. Sure, Richard. Yeah, I think with especially with the for profit developers, where you know it's. They're busy, they're running a business, and um, that it might make sense to try and ask around of who would be a good contact person in each one of those places, which you may have already mm -hmm. done, and try and reach out to them by phone and, you know, have some sort of a pitch that essentially says, you know, we worked with um, nonprofits, we, the city is interested in expanding, We'd like input about what it would take. Um, so can you spare a few minutes to come to this conference? Because I think a personal ask, um, you know, getting somebody on the phone for three minutes <clears throat> and then asking personally might be a better way to break through. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I guess you would ask the person that you talk to, are you the right person in your organization or who would be the right person? Well, mm -hmm. I definitely agree that a person to person connection and kind of doing a little research on the right person to connect with would be would be really helpful. We're talking about um, expanding this a little bit too to nonprofit developers. Um, but I can't do all this. So I've got to have people stepping right. up and saying, I'm going to be taking this and I'm going to be taking this other place. I just cannot. I mean, besides sending a generic email to people, which I can certainly resend that link, Gwen, or make it more specific or reword it a little bit. I thought of ways that I could reword it, actually. Um, other people need to step up. Mm -hmm. I think we're obviously not going to get this together for April 1st. I don't think. I do not think so. The 
could try to push it to May. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you know, I'm willing to make phone calls or however people want to do that. All right. Well, I mean, one thing I can do is. Keith, do you think, is the planning department involved in this? Do you think they'd have a role in wanting to be part of this discussion with the developers? Is that something that might help get their attention? Uh, how do I know? That's a good question. Um, you know, in my role, I don't really um, sit um, in the planning board or the zoning board of appeals. So other than either Melissa send me something or I just happen to, you know, I don't have like good relationship with developers. Um, so I, I don't really know the answer to that question. Um, what do you think, Melissa, about that? Now I'm, I'm kind of at a loss here. Um, really, my spinning thinking. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I can speak to um, Carolyn and George. I'm happy to speak to Carolyn and George, and get their thoughts on how best we could go about this. Um, and uh, you know, I'm thinking about also. Um, how much I can or cannot. I need to clarify some things with them and what I can actually do. Sure. Like yeah. Totally in, understand that. Yeah. In both camps. Um, mm -hmm. um I I would want to get that a little bit clear with them. So I'm I'm happy to do that. I'm leaving on Thursday for two weeks, but between now and then I'm happy to try and have that conversation with them and at least get some sort of direction on um, you know, if this is something that the planning department wants to, um, you know, jointly sponsor, um, I mean, I think the planning board members would be interested in it. It's, I don't think there's a lack of interest there. Um, oh, well, it's just, yeah, uh, I'll, re I'll reach out to them and see if I can sort of get some sort of impact import input back on what their thoughts might be. I also think that if we're going to sort of regroup and include um, um, you know affordable builders and developers that Laura can be a good resource in terms of giving us contact, you know, like a likely good contact name. Absolutely. So I can I will contact her about that. Yeah, yeah because we didn't talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I just need to, to have a chat with those guys and, and sort of clear what I can and can't do as well. Because I certainly, I mean, this yeah. is my world. I know some of the folks, um, but ultimately these projects come before us too. Um, yeah, you wear two hats, so... Totally yeah, understood. I mean, yeah. Our next, our next item, you know, is is one where I, I'm, I'm already seeking guidance on what I have to disclose and or what I can and can't do. So, um, yeah. Okay. I, I want to help. I'm just not sure what I can do. So. Okay. So, okay. so let's back away from that for a moment, and let me ask this question. Assuming that Laura has some good contact, uh, you know, in individual contacts for the affordable builders and developers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm always struggling with this. How do I get that information to other people so that you all can maybe pick one of those people if we're not gonna meet until April 1st? Is it allowed through email? I mean, this, this really stymies me because I can't communicate with folks between meetings so how can we do that? Well, um, you mean we cannot communicate with each other? Well, if I sent people a list, right, of here are five uh, affordable building and maybe yeah. regular developers, and here are the contact people that I've identified who would like to take which one and try to connect with them. 
is that is that okay to put out there on email? It's okay, I think, as long as nobody hits reply all. <laughs> then I think part of the issue is that somebody might get a call from three people, right? I guess if, because wouldn't you have to know who has sort of claimed that that call? Yeah. Well, yes, agent. it has to be, we have to know who has claimed that agency. That's okay. right. You could just right. assign it, Carmen. We could decide today that we, we you will delegate responsibility. Yeah, you will delegate, yeah. And that, and that it oh, would no. just be handed out and people would be expected to come back to the meeting with having done their so-called homework um, for, and okay. report back. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have a problem because we're not deliberating. We're not taking any official action. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're all engaged. We've been tasked with investigation. In fact, mm -hmm. gathering, which I think is permitted to do, to bring mm -hmm. back to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, that's a really that's a really simple and sort of st streamlined way of handling it. Okay. 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 So just, I, I was will. I say, will just throw me a that. name and I'll do it. All right. Name. So yes. Send me yes, a name. I'm, I'm down. Say, what? Yeah, I'd love to send me a name and I'd love to reach out. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're agreed. I'm gonna look up contact people. I'm gonna delegate and you all are gonna do the best you can with the homework, which will be this one assignment and come back on April 1st with the info, right? And now we haven't developed the info yet. What we want to know, we could, we could just leave it sort of general as we talked about earlier in this meeting, tell us about building affordable housing in Northampton and what stands in the way. Mm -hmm. Have a beginning conversation like that. Mm -hmm. And depending on what they say, take it in what whatever say, direction it seems. Would we, I mean, depending on who we call, I mean, you know, we might have builders who don't build affordable housing. So, yes. um, so, you know, it would, like depending on who it is, that's that might determine the questions or yes, exactly. So let's leave the question, you know, like Gordon, like I think you said you brought us back to the essential point, the um affordable housing trust fund and um getting information to potentially bolster that. Yeah, I, but I, I think that having a series of questions that sort of interrelate that follow up and just not having one open ended question, the conversation might just lead nowhere. It might just be what are the challenges for developing housing? And then more specifically, how, what about affordable housing? You throw that into the mix. And then okay. you probably need to define what you mean by affordable because we're not just talking about subsidized housing. We're talking about, as someone's already mentioned, workforce housing, which is not necessarily, it's, right. it's not subsidized, but it's housing, which is, which is a, um, which is uh, more affordable, I guess, the way right. to put it, um, <laughs> than some of the McMansions that get that people want to build. And then um, and then what could the city of Northampton do to help you in those regards? Okay. What are what are the challenges of building housing? What are the challenges of building affordable housing in Northampton? Which needs to be defined. Um, yep. yep. And then um, you know, what could the city of Northampton do to support to support uh, these efforts? Right. Right. And if we want to be really direct about it, what do you think of about affordable housing trust fund? But did we be, are we tipping our hand? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, they're not good. They're going to need a whole explanation of what we're talking about. So, right. Yeah. But I don't think that should be included. Well, it, it, once you find somebody too, that you make a connection with, and you're actually speaking to a human and you're having a conversation with them. Right. Um, you know, and then now you've got your, now you've got your connection. We come back, we talk about it. At that point, we may still, we may actually have enough people uh, where we can call them back and say, Hey, would you, you know, can you join us on this zoom next month? And we'll, we're going to go into this further, you know, would you be willing to do that? And, mm -hmm. and you know. Okay. It might be a foot in the door. Mm hmm okay all right so i think we've shaped this up um 
for now, I'll be in touch with you. Any other further comments on this subject before we go on to the next agenda item? All right, let's move on. Um, so the next agenda item is the King Street redevelopment. Melissa, the reason I put this on the um, agenda was, um, you know, there was this, a nicely worded letter to the editor um, uh, suggesting that instead of, instead of a Volvo dealership, this could be a great place to build quite a bit of housing. Um, I know that it's that there's some toxic stuff there in the soil. And also, I know, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I think it's not like it's owned by the city. It's owned by the people who own the Volvo dealership, I believe. So I just, I don't know. I just wanted to, any thoughts you could share with us about it, about this concept of yeah. this old Honda dealership? Well, I've been thinking about this a lot, you know, since you asked me, I did reach out to Carolyn. I mean, we had some people on vacations um, to answer your direct question. It's not on the uh, agenda for next month. It's on, it's on hold. And I'm not sure exactly what on hold means. That could be on hold for a week or that, you know, they could have had to run off and get, do something. Um, you know, so you got a piece of land like that that's been sitting there for 10 years and everybody drives by it and says, oh, I really wish that could be something, you know, and everybody's mm -hmm. got different ideas of what they wish it could be. Um, mm -hmm. I know the planning department has, um, you know, been uh, floating a lot of ideas um, around. I just heard in passing, um, it is privately owned. I'm not exactly sure who owns it. Um, I think at one point I thought it was the folks that own the Leah dealerships um, and whether they're the same folks that own the, the Tommy group, I don't know, but it's privately owned land, you know, and, um, and I, I think, you know, I think something that might be useful is when you see chunks of land like that, finding out who the private owners are and sort of reaching out to them trying to, and I know this sounds la la, but trying to connect them up with potential developers. Like I, I was wanted, wanted to know if Laura was going to be on this call because I wanted to ask her, you know, had her group reached out to these private landowners and asked them, are you willing to sell us this land? Because this is something we'd like to do with it. And to Bev's point, you know, we have uh, we have access to cleanup programs and, you know, we've, we've got, we've got resources and this is what we'd really like to do. And are you at all interested in selling us your land? Um, you know, obviously everybody knows, you know, we can't, it's private land. We can't tell people what to do on their land. And if they're mm -hmm. a family that owns car dealerships, then that's what they want to put on their land. Um, I do know that the Volvo dealership on Damon Road um, came before us uh, two or three years ago. It's a temporary lease that they had there. So they always always knew they were moving and they were only going to stay there for two or three years. Um, I, I just know that one piece of, um, so I'm not surprised to hear that they've come to an agreement or are looking at that empty site. Um, and I definitely, um, when something like that comes up, I think it's really good for the housing partnership to send thoughts, ideas, requests, things through the planning department so that they are entered into public record. I know I've said that a couple of times on the email that I send out. <clears throat> But I also, I, I get frustrated where everybody else does too, because by the time it gets to us, it's so far developed and mm -hmm. these private landowners have spent tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, on getting the site designed, you know, doing the wastewater, uh, I mean, the stormwater prevention plans and doing all the things they have to do to even get in front of us. 
-hmm. that at that point, it's harder for them to hear another voice in the room saying, hey, you know, we'd really like that to be housing. Mm -hmm. um, and this particular um, um, project based on the article that I read, you know, stated that there was going to be a variance that would have to be granted. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, because I know at some point along King Street there, the central business district ends. So I don't, I didn't look into where that exact line is. Um, <clears throat> but that, uh, that would really probably be the only opportunity for the planning board to not approve or reject a project is if they're asking for a variance and then we don't grant it. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're never in a position to say, we don't like your project. We'd rather it be housing. You know, we, we can't do that. Um, so I really would encourage, um, and I was thinking about this over the last couple meetings, I did get back in touch with the planning department to find out if they had any pieces of parcels of land that were, you know, sort of on the shelf, like we talked about, that were kind of waiting for uh, developers. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have any any such thing. I know that there are parcels that they are working on, but they can't disclose them because they don't want to ruin any potential deal. Yeah, yeah, so of course. There are some. Yeah. Uh huh. But I think it would be great if, like with the Northampton Nursing Home and some other areas around the, the town, like in particular, this site that we're talking about on King Street, you know, if there's if there was um, some way, to, some group or entity that was out there trying to really talk to these folks way before it gets to the point where it's been submitted for a site plan review. Mm -hmm. I think it just would be so, people would feel so much more heard and um, less frustrated than it, when they show up and there's, it's a nice, it's yes, every, yes, yes. And everybody on the board would say, sure, we'd love to have housing there, but I don't know that there's anything we would be able to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not discouraging anybody from showing up and saying all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that it, I don't, I don't know when it's um, scheduled for, it might be worth finding out who the owners of that property are and reaching out to them. I don't know how far along they are in their design. I don't know anything, but it might be worth a phone call. Gwen. Gwen. I have a question. Are we talking about the, it, this is different than the development on King Street that somebody was going to put in or is in the process of putting in that's um, uh, senior or retired housing and, and as a part of living there, you do community service? Yeah, this is different. This is the old Honda dealership that's, we're talking about this at the corner of Finn and King Street. What you're referring to is going to be further up towards Main Street. I've been okay. I know yeah. know where that yeah. is. There was an article, um, uh, Gwen, that got sent around about a week ago, I think, or so. Um, um, that was in the Gazette. That was, that? yeah, that was just saying, you know, this is this has been proposed. Another, you know, Volvo dealership's going to move there, and, you know, it. It wouldn't it be nice if this could be housing instead? Yeah, that was a letter to the editor, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that sort of gives us some information. Okay. So how, I mean, I guess you just go into property and deeds somehow yeah. and pick up that information. I think Keith just sent a link, right, Keith? Oh, okay. A about how to, yes. how to find property owners. The city um, parcel or the assessor maps, you can go to any parcel 
And on the left hand side, parcel details, and it'll show you its assessed value and who owns it. Oh, great. Thank um, you. Yes. And then yeah. can you do that? Can you do that online too? Or can you access that online? It's only online. Yeah. This is what it's, I was wondering too about that recent hunk of land that was is beautiful ecologically, um, that was being auctioned in in I think it was in the Leeds sort of area. Um they would I don't know if anybody saw that about that land that was up for auction. Was that recently? Yep. No, I totally missed that. Yeah. The swath of land. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find it. Um yeah, so initially um I saw this land when I was just just so everybody knows, I'm looking for an apartment, but this is 13 acres of land for auction in Northampton. Um, uh, for, I'm not sure if it was foreclosure or not, but what it says land search, 13 acres of land for auction in Northampton came up at the end of January. And I think I sent it to you, Keith, and mentioned it. And I sent it to Laura um, saying, hey, this land is up, but um, Somebody said something about wanting to conserve that land or okay. hoping that it could be conserved or I I don't know. Let me see if I can. Well, I think I think this is sort of big, bigger than us at this point. Um, sold, actually. Oh, so, sold. Definitely way, way bigger than us. All right. So let's um, Richard, did you can just we do a move title on? Search? And found that's the owner of the land. He what? Put in the chat. Richard put in the chat. Yes, I did. Yes. Well, you did. It's, it's Carla Casenzi. It's the, the Tommy group. Yeah. Oh. And, and Carla herself attended that um, that uh, hearing that we had um, a couple of years ago. I don't know how obtainable or, or, or reachable she is. And I don't know what um, the housing partnership can, can't do as far as reaching out to people but as citizens uh -huh. right you certainly call her and right say, i am you know you say or not say that we're you're on the housing partnership but as a city we're really interested in have you ever thought about providing housing or has anybody approached you about buying that land for housing you know mm -hmm. could, could be a wealth of information she seems like a very nice person mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Can we move on? Sure. Okay, so the next agenda item is the op-ed. I, I sent it to you. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to read it. I wonder, so I don't feel like there's a particular hurry with this, if we should wait until hopefully Ace is back at the meeting next month since she can screen share it. Does anybody have any thoughts? I, I thought it was a, a, an improvement of the, the draft we saw last month. Um, it really cut, I like the way it sets out what it's about right at the, in the very beginning. I will mm -hmm. say that I kind of got lost in the weeds with some of the data. The yeah. were a little bit confusing. And mm -hmm. I realized what may have been missing is an explanation of how the, the law uh, provides discretion to municipalities on what the threshold is um, and on what percent they would char they would uh, add as a surtax and that maybe needs to be explained because all of a sudden it just gets into numbers and I don't know where it's yeah what the basis is for that or why she's picked these three examples um, and then also we promised in the on the opening paragraph that it would it, it would generate over three million dollars so we've got to support that somehow if that's what we're mm -hmm. promising where is that supported in the data. I would I would not use so many examples. I I think the way to simplify this is not to give she she did it based on state median, local median, um, and then depending upon um, you know the sales price. I think we just stick with one example as what it could potentially do here in Northampton. That's enough. People can then say, but that's just an example. The numbers could be more or less depending upon what values we decide as a community to use. I did 
help edit this and I I wanted a to take out some of those numbers and really streamline and line it and simplify it but um you know ace just decided that she needed to keep those numbers in so this is why I I want to I think put this onto next month's agenda Hannah I just want to do a pronoun check here and just make sure that everybody's yeah. using the correct pronouns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody yes. Definitely. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Hannah. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah. But what do people think about um, bumping this to next month? Gwen? We haven't had a time um, this week to look at this. So I, I would I would love it if we could just bump it so I can have time to yeah. read it and process it and then Okay. I'll let Ace know what our feedback is. She'll get the minutes, but or they will get the minutes, but I will let Ace know as well what the feedback is here. I think that would be useful. And maybe Ace and I can work on this with those suggestions, Gordon, before the next meeting. Yeah. And then all of you take a look at it if you have time and if there are strong suggestions we can, we can talk about incorporating those okay anything else comments thank you Gwen and Hannah um other business I just want to put out there that um sorry about the background music uh, noise um, I just wanted to put out there that um, uh, Laura Baker and C um, Valley CDC came on March 1st to my community. And um, there was a pretty good turnout for my community. It was a good turnout. It was very productive. And um, people... will you remind people, Gwen, why, why they were sure. invited there? Not everybody knows. Yeah. Okay. So this is related to the Bridge Street development. Um, and, um, so, um, they're looking for feedback from people, um, essentially tenants, um, who are low income, um, because that is going to be low income and moderate housing. And, um, so they're looking for feedback on design and it's not just design, physical design. It's also like management design, you know, what works, what doesn't, you know, so, um, they were able to get some great feedback on that. They were really psyched that people came, which I was too, and able to get feedback. And I think we're going to do it one more time um, in the future, but I don't know when, but it did go very well. And I think, you know, they got a lot of information that they were looking for. So that's, that's such a great partnership, I think. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, good. Good news. Good news on that front. Good stuff. Anything else? not otherwise anticipated. All right. Thanks, everybody. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Richard, you second. All right. Yes. Good night, everyone. Okay. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.